who I am. I don't need to tell you that again. So our first speaker this morning is a good friend of ours who has shown his commitment to serving others, including our member counties throughout his more than 30 years of public office before becoming the governor of our great state. During his time as governor, he has signed legislation to develop Missouri's workforce, put the state on a path to fix the state's transportation infrastructure, budgeted funds to pay off county jail arrearages, updated our state's tax revenue stream with Wayfair legislation, and has shown great leadership in dealing with the coronavirus pandemic. Here to speak to us today about his successes and what we can expect in the coming future is Missouri's 57th governor. Phil Smorrison, Ted. What? You need to fill a little bit more. He's on for me. Well, as you know, you're the filler, not me. <laughs> I don't do jokes. So I do want to tell you too, 
And I'll talk more about that. Maybe if I got time, I'll take some questions on it too. But I think there is going to be a tremendous opportunity like we've never seen before. I'm just telling you. And, and you know, I've been around this arena for a few years now on the county budget cycles, on the state budget cycles, and I'm selling appropriation in state government when I'm the senator. And really kind of feel like I know something about it. The money that is coming down, whether you agree with it, whether you don't, that train has left the station and it's coming here. And there's a boatload of money on it. I don't know how else to say it. There's just a lot of money that none of us have ever seen the amount of money that's coming down this infrastructure bill for our state. It's going to be a tremendous opportunity for all of us. But I tell you what, you better be smart. You better be thinking how you're going to use that money. How can we all partner together? You use some of my resources from the state level. I work with you on some of your resources. And how do we really make a difference in the state for the future to come? How do we do something with infrastructure? How do we build highway systems? How do we build bridges? How do we take care of letter roads? How do we do all of the above? And how do we partner to do that? There's no use for you to go out there and think you've got to do everything for yourself. And there's no reason to think that i got to do everything by myself. What I'm going to do is partner with you on cost share programs, along with the money you're going to get directly you know, on that. It is going to be an opportunity most of you have never had in your careers as elected officials. So if you're not a county commissioner and you're here, and you think it's all going to be on the county commissioner's shoulders, yeah, I get their job and I get what they're doing. But every elected official ought to be figuring what is the best path forward for Ryan County? And that's what you ought to be, and you ought to be working together to figure out a solution. So if it's a highway project, if it's a broadband, if it's bridges, whatever it might be, and don't let anything hold you back from thinking outside the box. We do that every day. When I first become governor, there was two things I said was going to be my priority. I hope everyone in this room could answer that question. If I ask you, what is the governor's two priorities? And everybody knows how I've become governor in the state of Missouri, you know, and how that took place. So I didn't promise anybody anything. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's not all bad. Yeah, I'm not all bad. So I wasn't too obligated to much of anybody. So what I, said, what I really did is I felt, okay, what is the one thing that I could do to change the needle in the state of Missouri? It wasn't necessarily a political agenda. And it was infrastructure and workforce development. If I really wanted to change the needle in the state of Missouri, those two things have to happen. Everything's connected to those two things. Education is totally connected to workforce development. Infrastructure is totally connected to every one of your communities. If you want to expand, you want businesses to grow, and you want jobs there, you got to be able to meet those demands. I mean, it's just a reality. And the most thing I want, I do, and I hope you do too, I want my kids and my grandkids to have an opportunity to stay in Missouri. So we got to do our best job, no matter whether you're in a small county or a big county, take your resources what you have and figure out how you get the future. So those two become my two priorities. Now, as you well know, you can make 20 things a priority. But what I've learned in life, messages, if you get too many priorities, Nothing is a priority. That, I will tell you, will be the way to live that. So, we stated those two things. And what does that mean when I start talking about workforce development infrastructure? What does that mean for rural Missouri when there's a plant out there that moves there? Or some of the opportunities you're going to have for distribution centers that I'll talk about a little bit this morning, too. Which I think all of you should have that on your radar. Period. If you live in a small county in the state of Missouri and you want to expand, you don't understand how important distribution is if you're set by a highway system, if you're set by a rail system, you better be thinking how you can take advantage of that. Because you're going to get the opportunity to. It's just whatever kind of plan you put together. So before COVID-19, before COVID-19, the unemployment rate in the state of Missouri was at 3.7 when it first started. So naturally, when it first started, we had over 400,000 people on unemployment. Never have we ever seen any kind of numbers like that before in our state's history. In our country's history, half an hour over the place, 400,000 people. January of this year, there was 120,000 still left on the unemployment roll. Today, there's 15,000 on the unemployment roll. So that's what we down. The unemployment rate today is at 3.7, the same as it was pre COVID. Now you're going to say, wait a minute, Governor. There's health science all over the state of Missouri. Everywhere we go, people are trying to get people back to work. Well, two factors behind that. 
One, during COVID-19, there's been over $3 billion worth of infrastructure projects, jobs that have come into the state of Missouri. There's been 20,000 new jobs, not the old ones, but 20,000 new jobs. When you look at things like Chewy Pet Food in Belton, Missouri, if you look at the Casey's Distribution Center in Joplin, Missouri, John Deere Rehab in Springfield, Swift Foods in Columbia, Central Federal Services in St. Louis, Kawasaki with another expansion, and the list goes on. Freeman, another expansion in the state of Missouri. Just one after another after another. And just last week, we announced another major expansion of a processing company coming to Missouri, which I'm very proud of because of the ag background in Wisconsin. Yep. A half a billion dollar investment in the state of Missouri. $500 million, 1,300 new jobs. Thank you.